certainly need fish mercury concentrations to um, evaluate state advisories and federal advisories, so I'm not saying by any means that people should not be sampling fish. Um, but in terms of a broad spatial biosentinel, um, fish aren't always ideal. So they take a lot of time to sample, um, which time is money, um, and to catch and process and analyze. Uh, there's, there are more permits required depending on uh, where you are, but um, here at universities we have to go through um, the animal cruelty permits for vertebrates, which fish are, and we find that fish aren't always as widespread as macroinvertebrates. So we might have some very small fishless ponds um, that will still have macroinvertebrates that we can sample. Also, fish travel um, great distances. I'm in a coastal state, and so fish here that we catch in a lake uh, inland in Maine might have spent a good portion of their life in the ocean. So spatially, they might not be telling us what's going on in their specific watershed. So um, we put together this hypothesis for this research that dragonfly larvae would be useful biosentinels for mercury and freshwaters across the Northeast because we think they reflect landscape influences on the watershed and their life history characteristics are really conducive to mercury accumulation. So I've got three photos of dragonfly larvae exuvia. These are their shed exoskeletons, but the live critters in the, in the water um, look the same. Um, so why dragonflies? Uh, so some of this is pretty intriguing to folks like me who were really on the geochemistry end before getting into the biota. They're really long-lived, so they live one to five years or more in fresh water before they emerge as adults. Um, they stick in the pond or stream where they originally hatched for their entire life. They're not traveling to the ocean 